story time with JC. Can this crazy motherfucker tell us about now? I don't know. Let's see. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss none of my shenanigans. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla. Wrong and strong, suban la suburban, story time with JC. So, one time in band camp, I lived a very pretty fucking interesting fucking life. So in one of my past videos, I don't remember which one. It's when I was in El Paso Federal Prison that I met some dude there from Chicago and that later he robbed me. Well, this is that story. <laughs> Motherfucker. You know, I don't even feel bad for the dude. I hope he's doing good. I hope he's prospering. And I hope he's changed his life. <laughs> All right, guys, with no further However you say it. <laughs> Let's get into the story. Alright, so I met this dude, man. I met him. We're going to call him George. I met him when I went into the federal prison in La Latuna, Texas. He wasn't there long, too long before he actually was released. He was there way before me. We actually stayed friends through the, through the whole time that I was uh, there and then incarcerated in, in, in Chicago and, and all that stuff. So we stayed friends, so he knew, he knew. He knew I was I was plugged, man, and the people that I hung around with in Latuna, like. So I was I was fresh home, I had been home. Remember, remember, after only being home a couple of months, I wanna say like six months, I was making money, man. You know, I can't sit here and lie or complain because I was. He gets a hold of me. He tells me he needs a nine piece chicken meal, you know? I see him, give it to him, it's all good. Told me that he has some, some, some connects, some Jamaican dudes from, from down south. I, I really didn't, I just wanted to talk to them, see, where, see if they were really fucking Jamaican, you know what I mean? Just, just everything. And he insisted and insisted and insisted that, you know, he uh, wanted, wanted one of those there so they could see it. And I just, I kept saying no. So we ended up meeting up at the uh, Michael Jordan uh, restaurant, downtown Chicago, right? And we started uh, eating. Number one mistake, you know, when you're gonna do business or you're doing something on the street, don't drink, don't drink, don't use drugs, don't, don't, nothing because, you know, it, it alters the way that you're supposed to be thinking. And I started drinking. You know, back then I, I was a very, very, I was a bad addict, man. I, I could, I could, uh, I couldn't have one drink, and it had to be all, um, Long Island iced teas, and those, those things turned me into the Incredible Hulk, and I want to fight everybody, you know, and I started drinking, so my guard went down, and I actually invited the dudes to my house. Yeah. It was three Jamaican dudes and my boy, or who I thought was my boy. <laughs> so, you know, I invited them into my house, and... We go in and we're at the bar, we're chilling downstairs in the basement because my house had the down, the bottom floor was like a, a, I guess like a family room, the PlayStation was down there, the big screen TV, the sofa, and it had a bar and stuff and you know my dogs were down there so we went down there and we were chilling and all of a sudden one of the guys pulls out a gun and puts it to my head so you know I was like freaked out a little bit because I was like no no I was like what, what, what is this? You know, my first reaction that I thought, I thought they were cops, you know, and then I, I looked at my boy and I was like, what is this? And he's like, just chill, just chill. And he kept saying that without answering me. So that's when I knew something was wrong. So they made me sit on this. I had a, a, a one of those chairs that you play video games with and they had me sit down on it and um, they duct tape my arms to the, to the arm rest and my legs to the wheels. And... At this moment, I was already kind of like, I felt in my heart that 
they weren't gonna hurt me, but that didn't stop the fact that I, that I was like, I, I was, I was really scared. You know what I mean? Like, but just the way that they were treating me and talking to me just didn't seem like they wanted to like kill me. You know what I mean? So the dude starts asking me, where, where's, where's all my shit? You know what I mean? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't keep nothing in my house. What are you talking about? Fuck it. You know, I'm just gonna give them some money. So they can get the fuck out of here, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm still scared at this point, but like I said, for some reason, I just felt like they weren't gonna take my life. And you know, I've been there before, so I, I don't know, I just I just felt it because of the uh, connection that at the restaurant, I kept making them laugh, we kept talking, just stuff like that. And I had 25 grand underneath my sofa right there in, the, in that basement. And I told him to just lift up the, the the mattress and I would be there and he found it and he's like where's the rest and I was like dude that's all I have here like I don't I don't I don't keep nothing here like that's that right there is just like you know escape money run money whatever you want to call it it's just emergency money like I don't I don't keep large amounts here one of his boys kept on saying no and I seen it he kept on you know uh, rotating his head and that was that was my focus. After they broke up and they were standing around, I kept on, you know, telling them, dude, man, you know, I got, I got kids, man. And I told them, I was like, hey, move move my washer out the way. And there's there's a safe right there. They put everything in the bag. They, they their whole mood, everything changed as soon as I gave them that, that, that. The other guy that had been a little bit more quiet with me comes up next to me and puts the gun in the back of my head. I'll never forget, cause in that moment right there, I didn't, I didn't feel what I was feeling <laughs> the whole four hours before that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I got, I got really, really, just really scared, man. You know, I, I figured this was it. Finally, after all the close calls, everything, I, I figured this was it. I actually, uh, I pissed on myself because I don't even, honestly, to tell, you, to, to tell you the truth, I don't even remember feeling like I had to piss. I don't even remember, uh, like, nothing. I just looked down and I had pissed on myself, you know, and having the, the gun to the back of my head, I just, I just closed my eyes, man. I closed my eyes, I put my head down. I started praying, I started praying. In my head, I still felt like the barrel in the back of my head. 20 minutes passed by because I don't want to open my eyes. With my luck, I'm gonna open up my eyes and that's when he's gonna shoot me. <laughs> so I kept them closed. Yeah. You know, when you're like a little kid and you don't wanna see the monster, you close your eyes because you think that he won't see you either. <laughs> but I opened up my eyes, it was quiet. Everybody was gone, you know, and I, I sat there. I couldn't get loose from the fucking duct tape. Uh, it was like a lot. I sat there and sat there. My wife got home. And I had to roll to the wall and bang my head on it to make noise. Finally, she came down, cut me loose. And, and this, is, this is the crazy part, is that they left the money behind. Yeah, after that night, I actually, um, I actually got security on the house cameras. And um, I mean, he was one of my boys. I just had him with me all the time and I took care of him. But to be my, my security, to have him with me all the time, and you know, shit started getting real after that, man. It wasn't fun no more. It wasn't fun no more. You know, when I was a kid and I was driving around in my Regal, dropping off dime bags and, and, and buying the new Jordans and buying the new colognes, you know, Wings, Jordan, uh, Eternity, sunglasses. Like, it, it's when like, it was fun because, you know, a lot of kids don't have those kind of things and, and you were flossing, looking good, you know, and it, it was just, it had turned into something that, I was starting to get tired of, and this is, it's one of the biggest things that I talk about in my book is that it got to the point where it, it wasn't what I, what I wanted no more. It wasn't, you know, it's almost like I wanted to be boring again, <laughs> again. <laughs> I just, you know, I just wanted to like wear V-neck shirts, white from Walmart. I just wanted to like have one good pair of gym shoes. I don't like to wear jewelry no more and just work. I just, I wanted a, a peaceful life and I didn't know what peace was. I didn't know what that kind of life was. And you know, that was close around, it was getting close to when I started, when I left Chicago and I moved out here to Arizona. But like I said, I talk about a little bit more in my book and my book should be released by July the latest. 
Man, it's been an interesting life, man, an interesting ride. Been through hell and back. And, you know, I wouldn't change it for nothing, man. I, I wouldn't change what I get to do today and how I get to share my stories and motivate people and just show them that, you know, change is real. And it's never too late. Shit, it's never too late. Any day is a good day to start. So, with that being said, I didn't get shot that day. I still had my money. I was out one, but obviously they needed it more than me. So, you know, I hope you guys are doing well out there. I hope you guys are good. And don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane, live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. If you live right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys later.